welcome to the channel thank you everyone for tuning in so here i am again guys as you saw in the thumbnail uh this is following on from the last video i did exactly around 11 or 12 days ago uh, i unboxed my most expensive seiko to date the mm300 the sbdx 017 and i spoke to you guys a bit more about where i am with the hobby uh, a bit more from uh, you know like watch enthusiast point of view uh you know great comments from you guys great reception on there of course and also mentioned that um you know that was a consolation prize because i showed you what i was exactly after so hence why i'm making this video and hence why you see my face again so i have actually in my hand uh the watch that i wanted uh the seller you know stuck to his word did get back to me um and you know said it's yours if you want it you I know mean, i couldn't press buy it now fast enough so the watch has arrived it arrived today and I'm doing the same thing. You're going to see the first impressions, the unboxing. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. So let's flip the camera around and show you guys what I've actually got. And yeah, it's it's the equivalent of a grail for me. Uh, so I'm very excited to show this to you guys. And I'm very excited to look at it, you know, hands-on, first impressions, straight out of the box. So let's take everything out. As we saw before, it's gone through eBay's authenticity guarantee department. Uh, very efficient service. I think the day they had it, they released it the same day, which is why I got it so quick. About three days ago, I made the purchase, I believe, on a Friday evening. Uh, watch was posted on Saturday, and now it's Tuesday, and it's in hand. So here's the box that the watch comes in. As you can see, the model number is SBDB011. Now, bear in mind, this watch is discontinued. Um, and I'm going to also tell you why I think it's probably the best value for money diver. Full stop. Uh, at this price point, I don't think this is beatable. So let's take everything out of the box and in the box you'll find documentation for the movement so this is a 5r66 it's a spring drive movement with a uh, full-on gmt function this is the actual warranty card and the watch was purchased in 2019 towards the end of 2019 so it's not too old and here we have the box let's open it cloth and this one doesn't have any straps or anything like that that it came with so I'll give you guys a quick look at that. This is the beast, the MM600 um, in the flesh. It looks amazing. I can't. Wow. Yeah. Everything that I thought it would look like in the pictures, um, but the pictures don't do it justice because in, in life, uh, in hand, it looks beyond belief. So we'll put that away for a second. Um, and it has everything. So this is the good thing when you buy from other enthusiasts, you know, they tend to keep all the boxes, the tags. Uh, I, I'd kind of do the same um, when it comes to these watches. So I like to have everything together. Now let's have a look at the original price. So SBDB011, this was retailing at 470,000 yen, which is roughly around two and a half thousand pounds. Um, and I paid two four for this uh, as it is discontinued. So from Japan, Seiko releasing this watch at two and a half K, was incredible um, considering what you have with the watch spec wise so just to name off a couple of specs i might miss something um but a couple of things like the watch is full titanium it's of course 600 meters and the main thing the main selling point is the fact it is a spring drive uh, and this has got full charge so i think the guys at ebay did give it a full wind and just have a look at that sweep this is what it's all about um, at two and a half thousand pound to have a spring drive in hand uh, and i'm not fussed about the grand seiko branding yes it's a bit clotted the dial you know i'm not too fussed about the gmt function uh had it been without the gmt function it would have been spot on in my opinion but for what you actually get uh the looks the specification uh for two and a half k incredible in fact i want you guys in the comment section to tell me if there is anything else better than this spec wise uh and everything you know that this watch is basically uh, available for two and a half k um, because i have looked and personally i don't think there is but again i'm open to um I keep an open mind so let me know your thoughts in the comment section if there's anything that you think can compete so we'll put the box away um, and first and foremost let's give it a quick wipe down uh, because it does have the ebay guarantee paper which i'm dying to remove but i do want to have a good look around the watch before i do that just to make sure it is as described um, and the condition color matches up so let's give it a quick wipe down and then have a look so with the face sapphire crystal that's going to be clean ceramic bezel insert not a mark no marks on the bezel itself you've got a polished edge on this sawtooth style bezel 
Um, and of course, you've got this titanium case, titanium bracelet, and that's one of the things for a watch this big, it, it barely weighs anything. Uh, it weighs less than the MM300. So in fact, I'll put that right next to this watch. So side by side, they don't look that different in terms of sizing. Uh, and this is one of the other things which I love about Seiko is their proportion control. Uh, it's like they've got a magic formula. Everything uh, is just spot on. And we'll see how it looks on wrist because it is a big watch. There's no getting away from that. So in terms of condition on the case, you know, you've got a similar sort of design as it is to the MN300 where you've got this brushed center and you've got polished bevels on either side. And it's it's immaculate. I mean, there's no even micro scratching visible. Um, down to those polished facets on the end of the lug tips uh, you can see how solid that end link is and this is the main feature of this watch which initially drew me to it when i first saw the watch and you see these uh logs you see these allen keys holding that bracelet in uh it just gives off that tool watch appearance uh, and it does look bad as uh, it's a baddest looking uh dive watch out there so we go around the side again you know very good Polishing on there, uh, very clean watch, no micro scratches. You've got your X on the crown. Case back is a screw down, it's not a monocog or a monoblock construction. And you've got your movement specifications as what you find normally. The bracelet itself, being titanium, um, you know, they are open to scratches, but it does have the die sheet coating, which gives it a slightly darker hue. Um, you've got polished side links in the center, so it's a bit more pronounced when it comes to the MN300. It's a nicer bracelet than the MN300. I believe the links are a bit longer there. Uh, it's got taper down from 20 to 18. And of course, the ratchet clasp. Now, let me just show you guys the ratchet clasp because I did change the ratchet clasp on my MN300 because I bought this clasp aftermarket from AliExpress. I'll leave a link in the description because they're back out now. And they've got a polished sort of chamfer on either end. Now, just that little feature makes a lot of difference. It makes it look much better. So I will order some more clasps um and kind of retrofit that clasp to this but the ratchet mechanism works beautiful you know very clicky so condition wise i'm very happy and uh, the person before me has done really well to look after this um when you know there's there's barely a handful of these watches available uh out there and the us market has a lot more but they sell out so quick uh they are a lot cheaper in the us as well i've seen them as low as 2k 1800 maybe um but the only thing with that is the condition isn't always the best. I'm, I've seen some battered examples of this. So I've seen pretty good examples, but they've got that one mark, which is just a bit of an eyesore. But this, just immense detail. Check out the polished sort of edges around uh, that center log. Um, now, this is the, the, the reason you got the screws in there is actually once you remove them, you'll take the, the end link out and it allows you to kind of open the bezel for maintenance. But Seiko do say in the book that it's not for that. It's for Seiko to do and they don't recommend anybody does it. Um, the crystal itself is flat. Um, let's check the bezel rotation. Very subtle clicks. Uh, the, the consistency is even the whole way around. Um, and I like it. There's no play in there, obviously. And there's no misalignment as well. So I think it means you have to spend over two grand to get that sorted out from Seiko. So perfectly lines up with everything, all the markers. Um, and also you'll notice, let me show you guys the date frame here, which I've just picked up on. Uh, the date frame has this sort of rim or like an edge around there to distinguish that date wheel. Um, you know, preference wise, maybe a black date would be nice, but I know why they've got a white one. It makes it stand out so you can actually see the date rather than make it a stealth date feature. Um, yeah, brilliant. Uh, printed text on the dial, same markers that you get uh, on the actual MM300. Um, same metal polishing around there and this is such a classical dial when it comes to a dive watch uh, very legible and that's what you want when it comes to a dive watch you want large IO markers large hands as well the handset I would have liked the MN300 style handset but these are sort of um, like a sunblasted or a silver outline which I think matches the titanium so at this point I think I'm happy more than happy to remove this and get this watch on wrist and the weight is ridiculous it's so lightweight so check this out. We've got a huge watch on a six and a half inch wrist. Now it may look slightly oversized, but it still fits on wrist so well. Uh, this is the kind of watch I would wear. And this is why I really do rate, you know, Seiko's uh, dimension control or proportion control. The curvature on the case, the lug to lug, the diameter, you know, it's a thick watch as well, but with the lightweight 
of the titanium. It doesn't feel too heavy. It's perfectly balanced. And look how good that fits on the six and a half inch wrist. And that's what Seiko allows to do. In the early days when I reviewed the Seiko watches, a lot of people that don't know about the Seiko divers think they're oversized because they do a lot of 42 mils, a lot of 44 mils like the Turtle, um, you know, the Monsters, but they fit on a six and a half inch wrist so damn well, which is one of the reasons why also I love them. And they both wear quite differently, but equally as comfortable. I've had this MM300 on wrist for two weeks, I think, since I got it. I have not took it off. Uh, and it's giving me an accuracy of over around two seconds or three seconds uh, over the time of warning, even though the time graph I told us it was around 12 seconds. Uh, so that does kind of differ. So with this MM600, just looks like a bigger brother. And, you know, looking at the movement now in a bit more detail, this is why I think it's so hard for this watch to be beaten. If you look at the spring drive, that mesmerizing sweep, this is the, you know, pinnacle of Seiko movements. This is the top of the top. And with this movement, the genius behind it, I can't really do it justice by telling you, you know, all the little intricacies. You can check that out on, you know, Seiko's website. You can do your own research. But that movement for me is one of the best movements out there because they've incorporated quartz uh, and Seiko, you know, invented quartz. So it's only right for them to actually incorporate a bit of quartz in an automatic movement to give you this perfect sweep, which has not been replicated by anybody else. So this is Seiko's way of saying, you know, check this out. You know, the top of the top in terms of tool watch divers, top technology. Um, and this is, and we don't see this anymore from Seiko. This is the problem with them, um, where a lot of the diehard fans, we don't really know what Seiko are doing. You know, if you just have a look at what's available, um, I mean, these are the last good years of Seiko, in my opinion. It is a GMT movement. Now, the way you've got to set this, it's it's pretty normal. So on first position, once you screw it out, uh, you wind the mechanism to give the power reserve and that needle just fills up, right? Granted, it does go down rather than up, um, but it does fill up very smoothly. And then you'll see the hand sweeping. Um, when you do take it to position one, uh, that allows you to actually move the our hand independently now the first time you set the watch you've got to use that white hand there um, along with that minute hand to set your local time and then you use the hour hand to kind of set um, you know the, the time that you're moving to so you can see it moves independently um, the beauty of this is the spring drive is still ticking away it doesn't mess with your time uh, because this is a very accurate move so you don't need to hack the movement uh, before you change anything so with this way i can change it i've set the time um, and i'm free to move it around but I would use this as my home time. I don't really care about the GMT time. As I said, I don't really have a use for it. Now, the only drawback is slightly is when you pull it to position three, um, the movement hacks and you can change the whole time. But you can't change the date. Uh, the date, the only way you can change it is by cycling the hour hand uh, twice over to give you a date change. So if you haven't worn this watch for a while um, and you're out by four or five days, if, you know, if you're out by even 15 days, you just have to go around and round and round till you get your date set. Uh, which, you know, it's a bit of wear and tear on the movement. And that's, the, I think, only risk I can see there uh, if you continuously do that. So with this watch, you do have to wear it quite often. Uh, the crown screws in very smooth. Uh, good grip on there. And for such a big watch, you can't tell at all, guys. I'm very impressed. Uh, and I'm, you know, overly happy. This is what I wanted, and I've got it now just, what, 10, 11 days later. And not only that, I've got it next to the SVDX 017. Um, both are really well-made watches. Um, Price-wise, you know, I use a really good website to kind of determine the price of, you know, of items. Uh, I'll put it up on screen. It's called Watch Charts. If you don't know about it, please use it. It's actually, it covers so many brands, so many watches out there, but you can just put the model number in there. It will actually tell you the average market value of a watch. It'll also show you any... Uh, current listings for it uh, it'll also tell you what watches have sold and which haven't sold at certain prices um, and it's a really good overall indication like a generic indication on what a watch should be valued at uh, and with this priced at 2400 condition box tags uh, it's not a bargain 2400 but i think it's priced right um, i have seen some slightly more expensive models um, or prices but i think two for considering everything it's it's the best thing to pay um and now for that 2400 let me know in the comments what you could get better which would be better than this now i get it it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea um you know if you've got a smaller wrist you might not like to wear this but i think it's considering the size and and spec you know it, it does fit 
it's not huge huge so i think the only thing that you could compare this to possibly would be like a rolex um you know deep sea dweller um i have had the chance to try one of those on and those are massively oversized for this wrist and the thing with cases like tudor and rolex they're very flat and straight um so over time they don't really conform to wrist uh, and they do get quite uncomfortable but not watches like these so um yeah i think i think that's me done i don't have anything else to say on this um i think when it comes to seiko divers i'd say this is the best seiko diver or the top of the range one um so my quest for um getting the best seiko divers is probably done now that thirst has been quenched definitely um i really like what i have in hand and i'm glad that i had the opportunity to get it if you guys can get yourself one um and you are in the market of spending that 2k you know you like seikos i'd say definitely definitely give this a go uh, and it's fun as well the journey is also fun like i said this took me what three four months to get my hands on um maybe three so just just chasing it just just waiting and hoping i'd get it and when you do get it it is very satisfying so like always thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next one